Good afternoon, it is Clarissa Montero in good company as usual. Julian in the house. Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we were talking about pinup cars now. I can't share your fascination with pinup girls. Oh, well, most definitely. <laughs> but I can certainly share your fascination with pinup cars, right? Yes. So the question has to start with what were your pinup cars when you were a kid? Well, I had many different pinup cars when I was a kid, but there's definitely one car that stood out for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I would. I, I really, really love my GTR R34. Mm -hmm. I think that is the epitome of every man's dream, every young man's dream, you know? And uh, I mean, I'm a boy race at heart, I have to say. I yes, really yes, I think we got that from our first conversation <laughs> with you. You are definitely a boy racer, not quite at heart. I mean, out in the open, wearing it on your sleeves and everything. <laughs> But, you know, a lot of people, wherever in the world they come from, would have had some American muscle or another as yeah, their pinups, yeah. right? Whether it was a Mustang or a Viper yeah, or yeah. a Vette, a yeah. Corvette, right? Yeah. I mean, these cars inspired music, inspired movies, yes. inspired all kinds of, inspired I don't know, fantasies. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say that. Yes, but of course, I mean, uh, we all grew up. The only sad thing I thought when I was a kid was mm. I, I can't see these cars in Singapore. Right. But of late, yes. I mean, we have the Ford Mustang now. Mm -hmm. um, I hope we can see more of these coming in from Chevrolet. But at this point in time, maybe not yet. I'm not yeah. too sure. I can't, I can't predict the future for sure. But Well, I think a lot of people are actually watching to see how the Ford Mustang does in Singapore. So you yes. test drove the, the Ford Mustang. Yes. I, I test drove the Ford Mustang. What, what did you think? I thought that it was amazing to see a car that's considered small yes. in the US okay. sit on the curb looking so huge. <laughs> it was like, wow, you know, when you see movies and stuff like that in the US, it's like, it's the pony car. It's a really small car. I, I have my theory, mm. okay? The Ford Mustang is a beauty, for sure. Yeah, In the she flesh, is it looks beautiful. She's like Maria Sharapova, for example. If you give her some respect, the car will respect you. Mm. But if you decide to take advantage and disrespect the car, She'll give you one backhand swing, she'll break your neck. <laughs> I can't relate, because I have to admit, no girl has ever given me a backhand. <laughs> oh, don't even get me started on that. Man. Don't even get me started on that. You, on the other hand, probably have been... Okay, never mind. We won't go there, we're talking cars. But there were also other cars that inspired pin-up status for us. I mean, okay. for me, it was the Italians. They were racy, ah, they were handsome, right. they were yes. sexy. Yes. Right? Yes. But back when I was a kid, which should be aging me right now, is that the Italian that made the posters the most were the Italians that wanted to kill you. The okay. Lamborghini okay. Countach and stuff <laughs> like that. These cars wanted to kill you, right? These cars will dry your pockets. <laughs> that do. Yes, real quick. But I, it's, it's, I think it's very normal. I think it's very normal for a lot of us growing up, especially guys, mm -hmm. to have all your Italian not just a stallion, not just a Ferrari, I mean, yeah. like a Lamborghini. You have, I've got a lot of friends out there. Who, they'll tell you, you know what? I grew up falling in love with the Ferrari. Sure. And for me, to me personally, no, it's not wrong. I think it's it's perfectly normal, it's perfectly fine. But if I had it my way, Japanese. Boy racer. Yep, it has to be Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the boy racer cars for a minute. Okay. I'm not that familiar with the boy racer cars. Okay. I, I, what are they? Uh, Japanese. Japanese high performance cars. It like the Honda the, Type R? Yes, you can have the Civic Type R. Mm -hmm. you, can, you can have the uh, Subaru STI. Mm -hmm. that, that was, I think everyone knows about that. From the rally days till now on the road, they have the limited edition ones like the S207, 208, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and of course you have the GTR, the Nissan GTR. Mm. That is... I actually, when the GTR up. came out, when was it? It would have been, what, three, four, five years ago yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. When about. it first came out, I, I happened to be at Nissan, and I looked yes. at it, and I went, wow, this car is so pretty. <laughs> it's really very pretty. I look at the 350Z, and then I look at the GTR, and I go, mm, Wow, man. big difference. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah but the price tag is so good. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, actually, to be really honest, I mean, I, I'm driving my Civic Type R now. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to get a Subaru STI. Really? And to me, that was a car that I, I told myself, I have to own this car once in my life. I want, I want it really, really badly. Um, I don't know what changed my mind. I looked around and I realized, you know what? I still want to be a Honda boy. 
Honda boy. Yeah. Don't yeah. let go of your youth now. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to be in the corner. Maybe your, oh, no. your girlfriend. Goes, you know, you're not 20 anymore. Yeah. <laughs> And she goes, she goes, she comes to me and says, you know what, I think you love your car more than you love me. Of course you do. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to deny that. She's not listening <laughs> She's anyway. not no, listening. That's fine, it's all of good. Of course you do. <laughs> you know, and any woman who realizes that her, their man loves their car <laughs> in all likelihood more than they, they love you, uh, is good. It's good. Yeah. It's, there's nothing wrong with that. I know for a fact my husband loves his car more than he loves me. <laughs> it's fine. You've come I, to terms with that. I've come earlier. to terms with it. It's yeah. fine with me, and there are ma ways to make him pay for feeling that <laughs> way. <laughs> and it's fun. No, honestly, I mean, to have to have all these posters on the wall, it brings back memories. Mm. You know, you grew up having posters like these on a wall, and then now that I'm all adult, I have my own place and stuff, and I still want to have these posters up. Actually, I've graduated from, you know, those posters out of magazines that I used to, and I actually have now beautiful paintings of beautiful photography of yeah. famous photographers. Yes versions of you know some of these cars and that's art to me <laughs> i do i'm not kidding <sighs> but no seriously i i would love to have more mm. but i i cannot afford constant nagging's okay well but so. you know she's not listening and we know this <laughs> we're talking to julian ko from sg karma about the cars we dream about so what are your let's let's Narrow it down. Five of your pinup cars today. What are your ultimate pinup cars? Oh, like I said, the R thirty four is definitely at the top of my list. Mm -hmm. Definitely, um, I want my GTRs R thirty R thirty five as well. It's not just the thirty four. Mm -hmm. I want my thirty five. I'm not such a big fan of the thirty three, mm -hmm. but well, I mean, to each his own, I guess. I don't really have an Italian favorite mm -hmm. per se. They are good, undoubtedly. I've tried some of them, and they are amazing, amazing. But still, like I said, I'm a boy reset at heart. I want my Type R, mm -hmm. I want my STI. Mm -hmm. These are the ones that I want all over my wall. It's the kind of car that people will come to you and say, oh, you know what, you're, you're such a poser. I don't even understand because, is it because Paul Walker drove that car in Fast and Furious? Mm. This is the stuff that I get and I say no, no, this is the stuff that I grew up with even before the, the, the movie Fast and Furious came out. Right. Um, still, I am proud of being someone um, who is in love with all the Japanese cars because I don't just want to be in love with the Mustang, even if it's good, or mm -hmm. the bike, or the Corvette, or, or, or a Ferrari for that matter, mm -hmm. but not all dream cars, because I always believe that most dream cars are unaffordable, and that's usually the case, mm -hmm. you know, but I think it's important to have a set of dream cars that you can actually attain, something that's affordable. Your affordable dream cars. Yes. <laughs> okay. yes, absolutely. And and I'm proud to say I'm so you one now. So you're giving <laughs> what you've basically given me is your your affordable dream list. Yes. Okay. Well, even if it's unaffordable, it's still gonna be the same list. Uh, really? You, okay. <laughs> you say. Yeah. Okay. With Matchbox cars, when yes. I should have been playing with Barbie dolls. <laughs> so you, you know, if you remember the Matchbox collection, a lot of it was American muscle. Yes. You know, for whatever, maybe because it is an American company. So I really, really had a passion for um, the 1972 Mustang. Oh, lovely. Um, I, actually, the last Viper to roll off mm -hmm. the lot, yes. which would have been, was it last year? A year before last year. Oh, the, the year before last year. I thought that that was a gorgeous, gorgeous car. That would have been, that's a pin-up for me. Really? I'll, I'll never get to drive her because <laughs> they're, they're not making them anymore, yeah. but that was a gorgeous car. And of course, the Corvette. She's a movie star. Gosh, you know, you've, yes. you've got to you've got to drive a Corvette once down the Pacific Coast Highway. Once in your life. You once in to, your life. You windows to. down, top down. You know, you've got to you've got to experience what it must have felt like to be a movie star. <laughs> Pacific Coast Highway as the sun is going down. You know, and then yes. just pretend you're in a movie set. <laughs> then the camera's looking at you and yeah, you're just pretend, like yeah. looking ultra cool. You know, whatever. You've got to do that at least once. But I, I don't know about owning these cars yeah. on a day-to-day -day basis. So if you're talking about my affordable dream car list, yeah. actually, to be honest, I would have Subarus on there. I would have Hondas on there. One of my yes. favorite cars of all time that I've owned was my Honda Accord. Lovely. You know, yes. she was so easy to drive. She was so yes. reliable. Yes. 
Um, and, that's, and, and that's it, you that's know? How I, that, that is exactly how I love all these cars because they are reliable. I mean, yes, all cars will always have problems, wear and tear comes into play, but these are the ones that will give you pure happiness. And I say that, I say such a big word like pure happiness because not only is it affordable, mm -hmm. which means you can actually drive them for real in Singapore. Yes. Second, second reason being the fact that it being Japanese means you have wonderful aircon and in Singapore that's exactly I what know, you need. I know, I know. Exactly yes, yes, yes. I loved my aircon in my Honda. I loved my aircon in my Toyota. You know, I love, I honestly, that's Form true. and function. There is a form and function. <laughs> okay, but you know, at some point, what we are going to have to do is we're going to have a list of the top eight cars or maybe ten cars okay. that you and I feel you must drive before you die. Price is not an issue. You know, whatever they are, whether it's your boy racer Japanese cars, whether it's my racing Italians, whatever, it's the eight to ten cars, and we've got to decide this now. In fact, let's decide this now. Is it eight or is it ten cars you must drive before you die? Hmm. Eight is good for me. Ten is still workable. <laughs> either or, either or. Okay. Now I'm I'm already I'm already it's playing it in spinning, my mind. Right? Yeah, I'm already it's in my spinning. mind. I'm already going like mm, these are the cars that I want. You know, there's at least one classic car on that list that came top of reference for me when I, I when I just said it. Okay. And and I'm not telling you what it is because we're not doing that today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but really, it's like I'm not not talking about super luxury, super performance. It's just. The cars that we feel yes. that people have got to have tried. I mean, it could be a Rolls Royce Silver Cloud. You know, whatever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Yes. So it's got to be something special. It's got to be something that you you got to live. You know that you got to live once moment. Yes. But it's a list. Yes. You know what? We should do that. We will we do that. We, we will do, do a special on the eight or ten cars. We haven't decided yes. yet. Yes. Yes. You must drive before you die. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, this is going to be hard. This is going to be this such going to be fun. So this is going, this is going to be, be such so hard challenge. Oh man, I, I got to start eliminating all these, the, all these cars. I've always we need to, to have a meeting about what the categories <laughs> are. You know, drivability or of or, or what. You know, comfort levels. I mean, we we need we need to seriously think about this yes. because yes. this is saying a lot. The eight <laughs> to ten cars you must drive before you die is a big one you know yes, yes, okay. this is like the Oscar of cars yeah you know what i think we better put it to 10 <laughs> 10 we should okay. really put it to 10 it is just not enough okay it yes enough. i bet <laughs> <laughs> and on that note next week we talk about and i will be reviewing an well what i consider an affordable businessman saloon very nice. Which is the VW Ation. Ah, okay, okay, yes, yes. And after that, we will talk about our respective impressions of the VW Ation. Lovely. <laughs> Until next week, it is Jason Garz on Money FM 89.3 with Julian Cole from SG Carmat. And I'm, of course, Arasa Montero.